engagement when you come back. I think these are things that run through a lot of our heads. So having said all that, talking about why it's important and, um, you know, but why at the same time it's very challenging for most of us. Let's talk about how we actually do it. How do we allow ourselves time off at the weekends? How do we allow ourselves that holiday? Because I think that is probably the most difficult, a lengthier period of time. How do we actually make that happen without affecting our business in a negative way? So I have broken it down into four steps that work well for me. Um, every business is a little bit different, but I thought I would kind of share the four things that I did ahead of my holiday this time to allow me to take a proper break for the first time in possibly forever, but at least as long as I can remember. Um, and then I'll also share a couple of tips on how to stick to your plan. So tip number one look ahead at your calendar. So if you have a little bit of flexibility and when you're planning your holiday, look at your calendar and figure out when the least disruptive time is for you to take it. So for certain industries, you might have a busy season. Um, for my wedding and family photography business, traditionally, April through October is my busy time. It starts to quiet down in the lead up to Christmas and then January, February, March are essentially um, my quietest months. So I know that that's a good time for me to take a holiday. If you have school children, that becomes a school aged children, um, that becomes a little bit more difficult. My daughter's still in nursery, so we can be more flexible. Um, but you might have to plan your holidays around um, around your children's school, around your partner's work schedule. So it's not always as easy as just picking your quiet time, but that's a good place to start. You can also take a look at any big projects you have going on. So depending on how far ahead of time you book your work in with clients or if you're a product-based business, if you know that there's a really busy time um, where you're going to need to send new stock into your stockist, things like that, um, try and keep that in mind and try not to plan a big vacation, you know, in the middle of, of your busy time for making um, or, you know, in, in the middle of a big client project because chances are when you're away, you're just going to be stressed about all the things you have to do in your back. Tip number two, use as many tools as you can to make your life easier. So if you happen to work with a VA or that's something that you're thinking about, if you have any staff members, if you have any freelancers that you're working with on contract, think if there's anything that they can do for you to help alleviate your stress, whether that's bringing in somebody to help before your holiday so that you get everything knocked off the to-do list or you get caught up um, or you finish those big projects. Maybe that's having somebody answer, e answer emails while you're away or um, work on your social media posts and engagement if that's something you're really concerned about leaving. Um, use your out of office, use the kind of free tools at your disposal. So Put an out-of-office message on, let people know that you're on annual leave and you will respond to their inquiry as soon as you get back. I will sometimes um, note my availability. So if I know, like, for example, again, with my wedding and family business, a lot of times couples are quite anxious to book a photographer quickly, especially if their wedding is coming up in the short term, which is happening a lot right now with all the COVID reschedules and postponements. So I kind of put a note in there saying which months I'm already fully booked for, where availability is, and to let them know I'll get back to them ASAP when I return to my desk the following week. I also wanted to note here that you can look at a social media scheduling app. So um, I didn't do this for this vacation, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But you can use um, various apps, some of them paid for, most of them have a free version. So there's Hootsuite, there's Later, there's Social Bee, um, there's Sked Social, there's probably loads more that, that I haven't used before. But these tools allow you to schedule your social media posts in advance, which can be very helpful in planning in general. But especially if you're going on a holiday, if you are really concerned about the algorithm and you don't want um, to go for a week or two weeks or however long your holiday is without posting, you can simply create your content and schedule those posts in. The reason that I did not do that this time, so I actually do pay for um, Social Beat, which is a scheduling app. I can create my content in there and schedule content out, but I didn't this time because 
I wanted to take a proper break. And I feel that if, um, you know, if I'm preaching about how important it is to take a break and how, you know, we shouldn't let algorithms and concerns about social media override um, our needs as human beings, it wouldn't look very good if I then scheduled a week's worth of posts um, and didn't look like I was on holiday at all. So this time, instead of scheduling posts, I was simply honest. I put posts up on my social media about how I would not be posting for the next week because I'd be on holiday and I was going dark and that worked really well for me. Um, And I have to give kudos to my friend Denise Strozel at Sandstone Castles Marketing. Denise is the one who, um, who first mentioned this to me. We were talking about taking a real break and going on holiday. This is ages ago now and she was saying how you know, even though she uses scheduling apps now when she takes a holiday, she doesn't bother because she wants to take an actual break and how she thinks that's really important. And I totally agree. So thanks for that, Denise. That was a really um, refreshing way to go on holiday this time. Right. Tip number three, let your current clients know that you're going on holiday and wrap anything that's sort of essential or time sensitive or especially important up before you go. So I was in the middle of a big brand photo shoot project and I was hoping to wrap up ahead of going on holiday, but there were a few bits and pieces that I hadn't finished yet. I was still ahead of schedule, so I didn't have to finish before holiday to meet my deadline. However, I kind of had it in my head that it would be nice if I did. But anyways, I got in touch with my client and I let them know um, where things were at. I sent them through all the work that was finished, let them know what was on schedule for my first week back um, and let them know that I would still be meeting the deadline even though I'd be away. And they were, of course, more than happy with that. Sent me a lovely message about how I should have a well-deserved break um, and even checked in to see how it went when I was back at my desk on Monday. So you can try and wrap up as much as you can before you go, but most of your clients and customers are going to be understanding. They know that you need a break and as long as you give them a heads up so that if there's anything that they were looking for help with or that they're feeling stuck on, they don't feel like you've deserted them with no notice, um, there's absolutely no problem with taking a break even when you have ongoing projects. And my final tip for planning ahead is quite literally plan ahead. If you're worried about social media, schedule your content, make yourself a to-do list a couple of weeks before your holiday of all the essentials that you have to get done. Make sure those tasks get prioritized and set yourself a to-do list for when you're back. So this is something new that I tried this time. So I made my to-do list. I knew everything I had to get done before I I left. I did, I got all of that done, but I actually made my to-do list for the week that I was coming back before I left on holiday so that I wasn't thinking on holiday, oh, I have this to do or that to do, or oh, I don't know what I need to do when I get back. I knew that my to-do list was ready to go. It was prioritized. I knew what tasks I had to do first. Um, and I didn't come back feeling frazzled or like I was kind of jumping into the deep end because I already had a plan in place. So those are my top four tips for planning ahead for a vacation. Number one, look at your calendar, try and time it out as best you can. Number two, use the tools that are available to you, whether that is staff, a freelancer, or just simply tools like an out of office or a content scheduler. Number three, let your current clients know, give them a little bit of notice that you're going away and make sure that you wrap up anything that's essential for them before you go. And number four, plan ahead. And even if you're not scheduling your content, work out that to-do list, know what you'll need to do when you get back and that will help you um, go on holiday with a clear mind. I just wanted to add a couple of little tips at the end here about how to actually stick to it. So you make a decision, you're going to allow yourself a proper break. You're not going to check the emails. You're not going to do any work. So how do you actually make that happen? So for me, there were a couple of things that I had to do. Number one, I let my husband know that that's the way that I wanted to work things. I did not want to be doing any work while we are away. And if he caught me doing any work, he was to give me a um, a scolding. <laughs> so, so I knew that he would kind of help keep me in check. And I had actually said it out loud to somebody else that I was taking a real break. I had put it out on my social media accounts that I was taking a real break. So nobody was expecting me to show up there. I had that accountability because I had said out loud, I am going dark. I'm going to take a real break. 
My second tip is to leave your laptop at home. <laughs> so um, for me, because I do a lot of photography work, I am often not behind on editing. I'm not missing deadlines and things, but I always have editing that I could be working on, whether it's stuff for my own business or for clients. And I would often bring my laptop and bring my portable hard drive and think, oh, you know, if there's a quiet evening and we're not really doing much or if I'm up early one day, um, not likely with me because I'm a horrible morning person. <laughs> but if I've got a little bit of downtime, I could always get a few hours of work done. And I would without fail every time I would end up on the laptop editing photos. So this time I simply did not bring a laptop. And um, so I didn't even have the option to do any work. That was a big game changer for me. And my third and final tip for sticking to your proper break is to remove the apps that you know you're going to check in on all the time or at the very least silence the notifications on your phone. So I know I'm not the only one who will aimlessly scroll through Instagram. If I get bored or if I see messages popping up, chances are I'm not just going on to check a message. I'm going to end up spending half an hour scrolling through Nothing wrong with that, but if you are trying to take a break, spending half an hour, an hour every day on social media, engaging, um, you're not really taking a break from work then. So if you can work up the discipline, and this is a tough one, you could actually remove those apps from your phone and just re-download them when you get back. It only takes a few minutes. I wasn't quite brave enough to do that this time, but I did turn the notifications off and I did kind of keep my phone um, tucked away. I took it out if I was taking quick pictures or videos and I didn't want to pull out my proper camera, but um, I don't even think I connected at the Wi-Fi at one of our two Airbnbs because I just wanted that break. So try and be disciplined. Try not to peek too much at your emails. Um, try to stay off social media leave that laptop at home and um, tell people, tell people that you're taking a real break so that they will hold you accountable. So I hope that that helped. I hope um, that shared a little bit of perspective. I shared a little bit about my own experience um, of taking a proper break for the first time and who knows how long. I can tell you that when I came back, my business was still here. I hadn't lost any followers off social media. In fact, I gained a few on both of my accounts um, and my podcast account here stayed um, pretty much static the way that it was. Um, I did not lose any clients. There was one person who, um, when they got my out of office, let me know that they had um, gone with somebody else who responded right away, which is fine because let's be honest, if that person just wanted the first person who got back to them, they weren't really my ideal client anyways. They weren't getting in touch because they definitely wanted to work with me. They were just looking for information and to book somebody who is available right away. So there's no major loss if that happens, but everybody else who got in touch had actually waited to hear back from me. So I ended up coming back and having a few new bookings right off the hop, which was great. And most importantly of all, I came back feeling excited about work again. So I was definitely feeling a little bit burnt out by the time that vacation came. Um, I think we probably left it a little bit late, but due to all the lockdown stuff, we didn't have much choice. Um, and by the time that vacation came, I really, really needed it. So when I got back to my desk on Monday, I felt quite excited. I had my to-do list all ready to go, but I started adding some sort of big picture things um, that, that are really important to me that I was excited to work on. And uh, I feel quite recharged and ready to go again. So yes, I have pulled a few later nights this week, but I did take a proper week off and I am more than willing to have a few evenings of work so that I can take a real break. Um, and it's something that I'm going to try and make a point of doing regularly in the future as well. So I hope that that helped. Um, drop me a message and let me know if you can relate to this. I would love to hear your feedback on taking a break, whether or not you're able to do it. And if this inspires anybody to book a holiday and go dark for a few days or a week, I would love to hear all about it. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you are a long-term listener, thank you for continuing to listen to the podcast. If you have just joined us for the first time today, um, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you will subscribe so that you'll get a notification when new episodes come out. You can follow me on Instagram at smallfishbigpod. Um, my brand work is at smallfishbrandco. Um, and if you haven't left a review for the podcast yet you can do that on apple Podcasts. you can leave a review let people know what you think of it um, as you know there's no advertising in the podcast so anything i can do to help get the word out would make a big difference 